another person who said that once he got off tour, he's coming to work with you was Drake. Yeah. He said it while he was on the tour. Have you guys begun cooking up yet? Man, we ain't never stopped cooking up. I don't know what folks think. It's been know, going. That shit, that shit ain't never, it ain't stopped. It's just timing. You don't want to just drop all your shit in one day. Right, you got to like, pace it. You know what I mean? Oh, but you guys, stopped. are you guys actively still working together or do you guys have such a big library of stuff that you've already cooked up? No, I just told you, we never stop. It's gone. What's going on guys, Speedy here from Complex and today we have a very special guest, a big friend, a big friend of Complex as well. We got Tay Keith in the building. Tay, what up, bro? It's good, my How brother. are you? Good to it's see you good. again. Yeah. Since the last time I've seen you, things are different. You right. got uh, a much more flooded out watch. Yeah. Uh, the chain yeah. is looking hefty. Yeah. How have things been since the last time I've seen you? I mean, everything's been good. You know, we've been falling in place. For one, I graduated, you know what I'm saying? So like, that was like a major accomplishment for me. You know, I got Grammy nominated. I had one platinum a couple more times, mm -hmm. so, you know, everything been good. Yeah, we're gonna list off some of the accolades in a second, but first of all, it's a big deal because you were just named the best producer alive for the year of 2018. Right. Big accolade, big deal. How does that feel, man? It feel good, though, you know? It's, it's like, I'm just humble with it, you know, so, you know, just for, like, being the knowledge for stuff like that, just so, like, how much I'm really working. You know, I had to remind, stuff like that had to remind me how hard I'm really working out here. I think that's like, oh, okay, I'm on the right path. Yeah, right it's, path. it's way more to it. You know, I got a lot of more stuff that I'm trying to, you know, get the ball rolling on. So some people who have won this award before, Rick Rubin, Dr. Dre, the Neptunes, Kanye, what does it feel like to be in the same sentence as some of these people? Man, Dr. Dre, like, he just inspired me so much. Outside of music too, you know, just for him just doing the whole beach thing, like, it just really was more of like people like him, they set the bar high for me to set the bar even higher, mm -hmm. you know. It just more than just music when it comes to building the foundation for right. stuff and building your empire, you know. So have you got a chance to meet him yet? Not yet. I want to. All right, it'll come. I wish I, I wish I can. You know, it's gonna happen though. Yeah, it'll definitely happen. Let, let's list some of your twenty eighteen accolades, right? So right. in this past year alone, obviously you dropped the rover with block, mm -hmm. never recover went crazy. Look Alive, Triple Platinum, Nonstop mm -hmm. went number two, Sickle Mode went number one, mm -hmm. and Grammy nominated twice. Right. When you think about all of that, and then you think back to selling five beats for $250, right. what do you make of this journey? What I make of this journey is like, what I can do even bigger this year, you know? So like, I look at it like, all that happened in one year, like 365 days, you know? It's just like, okay. What I'm gonna do next, you know, that's that's always like been my mindset. Like, okay, never be like content, or just never be like satisfied. Just keep going on and on and on, you know. I I, I really like, you know, look back, had to remind myself sometimes, like a lot of shit that I did. I'd be like, damn, I really did that, you know what I'm saying? Just because I'm just always going. You said it's all just happened in 365 days. That's quick. Right. Did you expect things to happen that quick, or was it a shock to you? Yeah, it was really a shock to me because I was like, damn, like. Shit just start, you know, just happening, just like back to back to back. And it just was like, damn, I'm just being exposed to this shit like so quick, you know what I'm saying? It just was like amazing. Like why, did you, why did you think things clicked so quickly? Do you think it was just timing? Do you think it was the work that spoke for itself? What do you right. think it was? I mean, it's a lot of things, you know. One of the main reasons was Drake, of course, you know, and uh, you know, I just got a lot of respect for him. And on top of that, I just felt like just my story was just like so inspirational, just me still being in school and doing what I was doing. It just like set, set myself apart from a lot of other producers and shit. Right. Right. So all of those accolades that you spoke about and that I've spoke about happened while you were still in college. Right. At this point, you've graduated. So first of all, congratulations. Appreciate that. Secondly, though, where does graduating from college rank amongst some of those accolades, right? Because I know you're the first person in your family to graduate. Right. How did that feel compared to something like going to the Grammys? Like walking across the stage at graduation right. versus something like the Grammys? See, the Grammys, that shit just wasn't even like expected at all. I just knew I was gonna graduate regardless, you right. know? So like, just like how I look at it, like graduation of course was like gonna be number one because that was some shit I put four years into, you know, college and shit. 
really my whole life being in school, but then just going beyond graduating high school and going to college. But then I say second had to be like the Grammy nomination. Like, damn, one year in the game, Grammy nomination already. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even if I didn't win, you know, I just still like appreciate the fact that I was able to even be recognized, you know what I'm saying? People go their whole careers without winning a Grammy or even being nominated. So yeah. for it to happen so young, what was the first emotion that you felt? Was it excitement? Was it shock? Were you nervous? What were yeah, you yeah, I was nervous as hell. I ain't gonna lie, I was nervous, bro. It's like walk, like walking on the red carpet and shit. Like it's new to me, you know. I ain't know like I ain't even know how the red, how the other side of the red carpet look. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just see the shit that's on TV. I was like, damn. That was your first time on a red carpet, mm -hmm. and I saw you brought some of your guys with you. Yeah. How did it feel to be there with your guys? Yeah, it felt good. You know, just like them even experiencing this shit. You know, they're gonna be able to tell their kids and you know what I'm saying. They family down the line. I was able to go. You know. And just experience that shit with Take Key too, so. Word. Cool, it was real, it was like real good experience. Word, talk about graduating college for a second. I saw what it was like for you on campus. Right. It was crazy. Right. Kids screaming from across the, the quad outside of the student center. You gonna miss any of that? Yeah, I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss it for sure. You know, cause it was like the people who I went to school with, I came up and they still stayed the same. You know what I'm saying? It was like, like a family type thing, you know? Cause it's like, even when I came up, they still stayed down, still, you know, didn't treat me no different, you know, like, I can, it's different than, like, me going to school and then, you know, I could just, like, kick it and chop it up with you. But it's another thing when I'm going to school and motherfuckers who don't know me, they want to take pictures, mm -hmm. you know, they trying to record me. Like, of course I was dealing with it, but, like, for the most part, like, the people I went to school with and I associated myself with, they still the same, so I'm gonna miss it, you know what I'm saying? When you were still in school, at least when I was still in school, right. I was still young, I felt like a kid, but when I graduated, I felt like I left some of my youth behind. I felt like I had manned up, I had become an adult. Do you feel like that as well? Do you feel like now, like, playtime is over, now it's like time for business? You know, shit, you just have fun in college until, you know, you realize you ain't in college no more, you gotta, you know, go, like, handle responsibilities and shit, so. I mean, just me in my position, like, I'm already successful, fresh out of college, so me, like, okay, I gotta handle this or do that might be, like, different than the next person who, you know, kind of, like, struggling to find a job and shit, fresh out of college. Do you do anything differently now that you're not in college than when you were in college? Are you carrying yourself differently? Are you, you know, waking up at a different time? What's, yeah, how mean, different is life? Nowadays, like, I don't got really just that, then responsibility, okay, I gotta get up, go to class. So I wake up, you know, I might just go like, go shop. Well then I might wake up and be like, let me go to my spot in Atlanta type mm -hmm. shit. Like, just I can randomly do shit. Now, more freedom. You know? Yeah, more, way more freedom than like me, especially like when everything hit the fan with my career, I couldn't just come up and be like, I wanted to come to Complex, you know what I'm saying? I just had to schedule some shit. Like, right. I can wake up tomorrow and be like, shit, you know, I wanna go here, I wanna go there. Right, it was tough for us to even come down there. You had to schedule around right. the classes and stuff like that. Yeah. But now you can just, you know, pop yeah. up so here. That, pop I say that's the best part, of freedom now, you know. Definitely. Now, I saw you tweet something about your GPA wasn't all that. Yeah. What grad school is gonna accept you. Man. What was your GPA? I don't even wanna say. Was it, it's was low. it lower than three it's, it, let me, Hell yeah, <laughs> but it's, hey, it was good enough to, Graduate, Listen, you know as long as you got the degree, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Are you serious about considering grad school or are you just playing? No, for real. Whatever school, whatever, hey, whatever dean, president watching this, whatever, man, I need a master program at your school. Let me get in, let me get in there. But you were just talking about all the freedom you have now that you're not in school. Are you willing to give up all the freedom again to who go said, back to who school? Who said I gonna give it up? Well, you have no choice, right? You're gonna have to go to class, you're gonna have to do homework. Uh, I ain't got to. I ain't gotta do that. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanna be in the program. Yeah, I just wanna I wanna get my degree though for real. So, you know, whether it be online or not. Or, or you know, what I'm, what you would know. you want the degree to be in? Would it be in something music related, maybe something business? What would that look like? When I retire, I plan to retire at fifty. Okay. Like, fifty years I'm old. Done, my I ain't touching no more. And how old are you now? Twenty two? Yeah. So when okay. I hit fifty, I wanna go like be a professor. So hopefully I have my degrees, you know what I'm saying? Right, then, like, you know, mature, you know, get a little bit older and shit, realize some other things, be a little bit more wiser, and get my degrees and go be a professor. What would you teach? I want to teach uh, something with media. Okay. You know? I know you studied what, media management yeah. was? Would you want to teach something like you studied? Yeah, but more like, you know, like, 
as far as like new media. Like more practical stuff that people will use on a day-to-day -day basis. Exactly. Wow, so Tay Keith, the producer, wants to be a professor. Mm-hmm. And I retired from music. Why retire at 50, though? I don't know, it's just the age I want to retire. You know, they say, like, you at 50, you going over the hill. Mm -hmm. Then when I'm done, I don't want to, like, it's already stressful, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But I say by then, I want to be able to enjoy life and, you know, give more, you know what I'm saying, teach, educate, whatever type. Let's talk about you growing up. I know right. you listened to a lot of Jeezy growing up, but did you have a favorite producer while you were a kid? Well, I listened to more than just Jeezy, for one. I listened to, like, Manny Fresh, Timberland. For real, everybody. Like, it wasn't no specific, you know, producer. I listened to, like, a lot of people, like, who was making music and shit back then, so. Were there any beats that were, like, your holy grails? That, like, when you were growing up, you were like, damn, that beat is hard. Or yeah, Lollipop, Lollipop. Lil Wayne? I mentioned that shit. Lollipop, Lil Wayne, whoever Where? made I don't even know who made that beat. I don't, I can not tell you. I ain't never look it up, but that beat just, that, cause that beat was one of the main beats that, like, caught my attention to even, like, start creating music. You know what I'm saying? So I, I always remember that. So I remember you telling me that your first computer that you got and started making beats off of, right. you bought from a pawn shop. Yeah, Easy Pawn in Memphis on summer. And how much did you pay for that laptop? Forty dollars. Forty dollars for yeah. the computer. And what beats did you make on that laptop? Uh, all the beats that started making me money, shit like on YouTube. So like, I ain't making nothing like no hits or no shit like right, that. Right, right. But like all the beats that I was making, like that was I would put on YouTube like the different type beats and shit. Right, 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 right. Then like all the beats I was making my beat tapes, putting it out, put it out like that. Mm -hmm. So when I started making more money, then I bought me some new equipment and shit. Right. Then I just kept, like, kept going on and on. I remember you saying you were using the Fruity Loops trial and the $40 computer from the pawn shop. When you think about where you are mm -hmm. now, what do you remember about the journey that like took you from one place to the other? Trying to actually like develop that shit, you know, and just like being able to afford the the good shit, the equipment you need to, you know, like me, when I first started, all I had was the laptop and some cheap headphones. I ain't have no speakers, you know, no <laughs> rocket speakers, or no MPC, no, you know, no keyboard, like none of that. It just was the laptop and the headphones. So That's it. Growing from there, it just, you know, teach you a lot. I was buying used laptops, so like they always were slowing down the kitchen viruses or some shit like that, so <laughs> then, when the shit started really, you know what I'm saying? Like kitchen, I was like, all right, let me invest in some real equipment. Right. That's when I bought my deal. Right. So I all bought right. the deal, man. I remember you saying, or I remember hearing you saying you made Rover in your bedroom. You made Look Alive in your bedroom. And you used to make beats in your car? Did you Yeah, ever I remember one time I was like seeing my counselor, like my advisor, for like my last like meeting with him. And I was just in the car like, I don't know if it was before or afterwards, but I was just making beats in the car like then. Like. So you can, in theory, make beats anywhere. Anywhere, I can make one right here. If, I had if you had the computer, we'd pop I'd it out. Make it right now. Is it, I feel like you've made huge hits, right? Like obviously Roll for Look Alive. These are huge mm -hmm. hits and you made those in your crib. Do mm -hmm. you prefer a work environment like that where you can kind of just cook up on your own or do you prefer like the studio with the artist? It the just depends session? on like, honestly, what type of vibe you want to go in. I was in like, it like Memphis type of Grammy type vibe, mm -hmm. you know, just cause I had listened to like a whole bunch of 3-6, like around the time I was making that shit, I was listening to like Project Pad, 3-6 Mafia, you know what I'm saying? Like just that old shit, mm -hmm. play fly, like I was just listening to it around that time. But like, when I wanna just say like, if I wanna do some pop shit or, you know, some R&B shit, and I'm with the artists, I might, you know, just play some old school R&B shit or like some, you know, just catch the vibes with Word. it, so. Okay. It really just depends on, like, it ain't really the environment. It's more like, more like what you listening to and what type of vibes you getting in. So if I want to come out here and kiss er, like R and B vibes, then shit, you know, I can do that. Like, sure. I know you said a minute ago, you, Dr. Dre is someone you really look at, but like, are there trajectories of like maybe other producers who you look at and I'm like, damn, I want to do something like that. Like Pharrell, he's st scoring films. Mm -hmm. um, Mustard, he's you know got. Grammy nominated artists under his belt for uh, Kanye. He started rapping. Is there something else that you'd like to do or a trajectory that you'd like to follow? Uh, I mean, I get it. I get it. I ain't gonna lie, I get some from every last one of them, you know? Cause they all inspire, like, not just me, but all the other producers because they like the ones who are at the top. So I'm just building my platform up to the top and I'm getting a piece of, you know, knowledge from every one of them who you just named, honestly, you know, right. trying to find a way to 
like better myself, rather what, which way I want to go down. I might be that producer who might do some shit different and set the bar high mm -hmm. in that way, you know. Right, right. Rather they got artists or rap or, you know, movies or whatnot. I might be doing some shit like professor, like right. being a professor or right. some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? No like anything. You just never know, you know? I remember hearing you say that when you graduated, you were going to move to Atlanta. All right. You still live in Tennessee or did no, you No, I got me a spot in Atlanta. Oh, you do have a spot in Atlanta. Yeah. Okay, what's life like in Atlanta for you now? Are artists more easily accessible there because a bunch of people live there? What's it like compared to living in Memphis? Yeah, it's way, it's way like more like accessible to artists. Like two chains hit me up. Come pull up at the studio, you know what I'm saying? Playboy Cardi hit me up, pull up at the crib, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's way more artists who actually live in Atlanta than in Memphis anyway. Majority of the rappers who make it out of Memphis, they don't stay in Memphis no more. But yeah, it's way more accessible, you know? Majority of the artists got their own studios in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? So if when I'm down there and I'm vibing out, it might tell me to pull up here or, you know, whatever, so. You spent a lot of time in Tennessee. You said that most people who pop up from Memphis don't still live in mm -hmm. Memphis. When you hear news like what happened in Nipsey, right, in right. his own neighborhood, does that change the way you look at your hometown? Does it make you say, hey, maybe I shouldn't spend as much time home as I do? Yeah, I feel like a lot of rappers who, like, get killed, maybe in a city, you know, so I be just real cautious on when I'm a go, like, you know, I don't gotta watch my back when I'm in Memphis. I got a lot of respect, but at the same time, it's like, it still might be like, somebody was just telling me, like, it could have been like, they hate, they hating ass nigga in third grade had the same opportunity as you mm -hmm. had, you know what I'm saying? Right. Y'all both, you know, went, went, to, went to school, you know, y'all, same, school, same, same, teacher, same, same opportunity, program. everything, right. same, you know, neighborhood, like, and he might just be looking at you like, you know, it could have been me. Mm -hmm. It should have been me, yeah, I'm better than yeah, him, exactly. whatever. So it's different, like when you you in like another city and you know, you you surround yourself around self-made people who did similar shit or different shit, but still successful too, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Right. On a more positive note, Tennessee is known for a lot of things, very rich music history. It's like right. the capital of country music. I'm curious mm -hmm. as to what your thoughts are on Lil Nas X's joint, Old Town Road. I had hit him up probably like, I say like, a month ago, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just cause I just seen like some shit, like what he had going on was just catching my ear. And, like, I was like, this nigga know how to troll, you mm -hmm. know, he know how to capitalize off the shit. He got a hit song, you know what I'm saying? Let me just hit him up and just chop it up with him. But I stayed in contact with him and then like, out of nowhere, he just like, you know what I'm saying? Like blew up, got number right. one song, then he got Billy Ray Cyrus on the remix. To hop on the remix, like, right. like, yeah, like I said, that nigga's small, you know what he doing. Yeah. yeah. What was that first conversation with him like? What do you guys talk about? I'm gonna say majority of the people I come in contact with now who coming up, as far as like young, young mm -hmm. guys in the music industry, it's just straight work, you know what I'm saying? We just like like just talk about what we can do or what we can make instead of just like me talking to like OG in the game, like getting advice from them type right, shit, right, you know right, what I'm right. saying? Like, I talk, I chop it up with, with him. It'll be about music rather than just me chopping it up with like somebody like 2 Chains or something. It'll be more about, you know, him putting me on game about some Life, shit. Yeah, you know, advice, yeah, exactly. Like Nah, I feel that. Like, okay. So do you guys have plans to work together? Would you I plan on, yeah, I plan on, you know, shit, we, we catch each other in the same city. We'll, you know what I'm saying, make Cooks some shit so. Let's talk about you. Uh, obviously, the producer tag is famous at this point. I feel like we're in this new era where producer tags become memes, right? People right. are talking about them on Twitter. Where do you think your producer tag ranks among some of the other ones? Do you think yours is the hardest? Are there other producer tags that you like as well? I like all them just. I like, I, one, of, one of my favorite tags probably gotta be, besides mine. Mm -hmm. Besides yours. I like the, I'm in London, got my beef from London. Yeah, yeah. That's, that shit hard. London joint is tough. It's a hard, that's a hard tag. Then, uh, Turbo's joint is tough. Yeah, Turbo. Turbo, of course. I mean, everybody got some hard tags, man. You know, it's the new way. Right. I kind of feel like they kind of put producers in a better, position of you working as a producer and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying you ain't got no tag it wouldn't show but if you working as a producer and you got a, a good tag it's gonna show definitely you know like think back maybe 10 years ago when producers weren't putting their tags on the record people wouldn't really know if you look at the Billboard Hot 100 how many producers do people know right. on that list now they'll hear a Drake record and they hear Take Keith is on it like, mm -hmm. oh Take Keith it builds like a brand familiarity do you think that helped you at all in your career yeah, for sure. I feel like they help, you know, because it's like 
instead of just me being a regular producer like with hella hits, mm -hmm. it kind of like bring fame too, you mm -hmm. know, like clout and all that shit. Man. And I feel like that's kind of like, besides just me, it's setting the bar high for like other producers too. It's, it's making them have better opportunities now because you got the take keys, you got the wheezes, you got mm -hmm. the turbos, you know what I'm saying? You got like all the, the you got the metros, the murders, you know, mm -hmm. all the producers starting to have like names and faces with their names and shit. And it's becoming more of a trend now. Do you like that fan? Yeah, I mean, it's pros and it's cons, you know what I'm saying? You just gotta, you gotta take it, you know, the, the good, good with the, the bad. bad. Do you so. think it, there are more pros or more cons? Like, do you like it more than you don't like it? I don't know. I can't answer that. I don't even know, bro. You just take it. You I just, just take go with the shit. punch it. I ain't got no. I ain't, ain't got to worry about shit. Regular people got to worry about. You know what I'm saying? But I do got to worry about shit that regular people don't got to worry about. You know. Right. So you got to take the good with the bad. They come with anything in your life. Mm -hmm. It just come with it. Right, right, right. For it's real. just a part of the game. It's Either part way. of the game. Now talk about some of your beats. Obviously, huge records. Is right. there a beat that you look at that you're like? Yo, I did my thing on that beat. Is there one that sticks out in your mind that you're still proud That's of? out right now? No, it could be something we've never heard before. Man. It could be something that shit. was a hit. Man, I got some crazy shit on the way. Like, you know, just like me just put my time into shit. It's different when you can just make a hit, make another one. But when you actually put your time into something and you like actually like the music, instead of just like making it just for a hit, then like you would look at it different. So I got a lot of music that on the way, I put some real time to, for real. All right. Out of all the records that are out now, which one would you say is your best one? My best one? Yeah. Um, Maybe your favorite. I got a lot of shit. I can't even say, because I don't want to, you know You don't want to pin it? All right, yeah. give me a couple. What are some that you are proud of? Of course, I'm proud of like Sicko Mode. I'm proud of like Temptation, mm -hmm. I deal with Future. Mm -hmm. I like this song, because it, it, it brought out a different vibe of me, producing wise, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like, that's that's one of my favorite ones. Stupid with six, six nine. nine, right? Uh, that went crazy. Don't come out, don't come out the, the, house. the house with uh -huh. Metro. In twenty one, like, yeah. You got a lot of hits. Obviously, we've named you as the best pro producer alive for twenty eighteen. What does twenty nineteen look like? Man, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. You've Summertime, already time. I'm gonna release my own shit. Word is it a an I'm album? My first, and I got I got uh, I got like an album worth of shit. It ain't time for it though. Okay. I'm gonna just release my first single though. Your first single? My first single. Okay, who's on it? Should I say? I mean, we just named you the best producer Damn. alive of 2018. What better platform to get it off than right here? Oh, you are right though. My first single got Shaq West and Yachty. It's featuring Shaq West and Yachty. Shaq West and Yachty. Yeah. How did it come together? Is it, was it your idea? Relationships. Relationships. You know, my homeboys, you know, we chop, I chop it up with them all the time. Like, like I was telling you like, some, you know, some people you chop it up with, you work, you know, some people you get advice from, some people you give advice to, you know, it's just about building that relationship though. All right. Yadi, you've worked with before. Have you worked with Sheck West before? I don't think I've heard of uh, Take Keith and Sheck West record yet. Mm -mm. So this is the first one. It's, uh, yeah, this is the first one. What can uh, we expect from it? Is it hard? Yeah, this shit, uh, this shit hard. Shit hard. When is it dropping? Do you have a date? Uh, maybe a time. Are you trying to get too much info? Man? Is it is it speedy? You is got? it the month? Is it this? You just, you just gotta summer? wait. You just gotta wait. All right, but it's coming. It's coming. Though. It's coming. It's hard. Word. All right, you've worked it. Obviously, 2018. You work with Eminem. You work with Drake, Trav. Mm -hmm. Now we know about Yachty and Sheck West. Who's right. left? Is there someone else that you haven't tapped yet that you're waiting for the call? You're waiting to hit up. A lot of people. A lot of people. Give me a couple. Who who, who you thinking? I gotta work with Dr. Dre for sure. Dr. Dre. That's a big you. one. Uh, I've been in contact with Timberland. Okay, that's so another big one. Hopefully, you know, we, we can make we can make some work. Uh, I got to work with Metro, you know, just like Metro being like really the biggest like producer of like our generation, mm -hmm. like coming right. up like now, just working with him. Definitely. But uh, who else? Artist wise, got to work with Jay-Z. Oh, that's a huge one. I ended up working with Jeezy too. I, yeah, I did. I, yeah, I ended up working I'm with I'm excited Jeezy, about so. that one, I'm excited. I want to say like Gotti. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like working with him. I ain't worked with him yet. Right. From growing up listening to a lot of Jeezy, what was it like to finally get to work with him? Man, that shit was crazy. Like, Jeezy was really one of the first artists to reach out to me, you know, because he, uh, he had got one of my beats, a hold of one of my beats. And this was like maybe like a year ago, mm -hmm. a little over a year. 
He got a hold of one of my beats somehow, so he just always stayed in contact with me and shit, you know, so just for me, like, being able to, like, chop it up with him, he telling me, you know, give me advice and shit like that, too, so it's just crazy, like, somebody who influenced you, you know what I'm saying, getting influenced by you now. Right, someone who did so much for your career now is able to it's crazy. look at you. It's a full circle moment, you know? It's always like that in life. Yeah. It's a whole part of life, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. At full circle. It's crazy. Someone else who I'm excited to see you work with is Cole. I saw you were at the Dreamville sessions. Yeah, I forgot about it. I forgot in Atlanta. Something. What were the Dreamville sessions like? Man, that shit was dope. You know, we were just with hella producers and hella like songwriters and hella rappers, like, and me, I like producers were looking at me like, bro, why you ain't in a session with Cole and all this and that? Bro, that's like I'm just I'm just vibing, like I'm getting to meet new people, you know what I'm saying? Like I got to meet uh Jason, you know, Jason A, mm -hmm. um, uh, Go Grizzly, you know, just some dope ass producers too, right. you know, who was just like genuine and shit. And people just wonder like, why you weren't in a session, like why you ain't in a session with Cole? Bro, I'm just like vibing, I'm trying to, you know, just networking, mm -hmm. you know, meet new people and shit. Soak but it up. When I ended up going in with Cole, uh, it was him at T minus. I was in the back just like soaking up the game, basically. You know, they were just, you know, te teaching me a lot of shit, telling me a lot of shit. Uh, T minus was just showing pointers and shit. J Cole just, you know, telling me about like life, basically. Right. It's dope. Is he cool? It's, it's fuck. Like regular people. There's a lot of rappers who like just regular, like cool, genuine people. I saw a photo of you on the computer and him standing behind you. Did you guys get a chance to work together musically at all? I mean, it was, yeah, but you know, like I said, it was just like all over the place. You know, it's just everybody's working with everybody. So I did get a chance to go with him two days. But for the most part, I was just like working with just upcoming producers and mm -hmm. shit, like catching them vibes. Word on the street is that you also have a record with Khaled. Yeah. What's up with that? <laughs> shit, it's gonna be crazy. Khaled, he always like in good spirit, just a helping hand, honestly. You know, he, he helping me just like get me on a different platform too. So much respect to Khaled. The shit that I got with him is some whole different shit, you know, so it's gonna be dope. Everyone knows he has an album coming out in May. Did you guys working together have anything to do with the album? Possibly. All right. <laughs> so you may be a part of the album. Possibly. We'll keep hey. our eyes open. Is it a big record? I'll ask that. Possibly. Yeah, possibly yeah, a possibly. big record. You just never know. For example, it could be a record like people put a lot of time into. It'd be hit or miss. You right. know? Right. You just never know. On that note, I don't ever just make music to be like, ah, oh, it's going to be a hit. Like, I had to stop getting out that mindset that, right, because right. I start feeling like, I'm working. I don't want to feel like I'm working. I want to feel like I'm having fun. Right, like I'm a creating, hobby. I'm creating vibes, man. You know, making some some shit that just like better for me instead of just like, man, I gotta go on, hurry up and keep doing this so I can keep up and you know what I'm saying? Because of course it's ups and downs. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the game, but I don't want to feel like you know I'm working for the game. I want to feel like I'm having fun. You Definitely. Know what I'm saying? The one thing that we do know about Khaled, though, is he has a lot of mainstream success. He'll put out an album and it'll be 12 songs, all singles. And so if you're a part of that, <laughs> hopefully that means that big things are in the works. Hey, we're going to see. I got a lot of shit on the way, though. I, I ain't going to lie. We might as well just go down the list. Another person who said that once he got off tour, he's coming to work with you was Drake. Yeah. He said it while he was on the tour. Have you guys begun cooking up yet? Man, we never stopped cooking up. I don't know what folks think. It's been know, going. Shit, that shit ain't never, it ain't stopped. It's just timing. You don't want to just drop all your shit in one day. Dude. Right, you got to like, pace it. You know what I mean? Oh, but you stop. guys, are you guys actively still working together or do you guys have such a big library of stuff that you've already cooked up? No, I just told you. We never stop. It's going. <laughs> it's keep, all right. Hey. We'll keep the eyes peeled for the Drake stuff it's, too. Hey, shit ain't stopped, bro. What was your reaction when you saw the video of him saying? I was there. Oh, you were at the show? Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Was what was the backstory behind that? Did you know he was about to say that? Yeah, no, nah, shit. I mean, it just was, um, it was like, yeah, yeah, he came to Tennessee, you know, did the show in mm -hmm. Tennessee. It was my birthday week, my birthday weekend, you know. Shit, I was like, you know, I wanted to come to the show and shit, you know, chopped it up. Had a good the time, show. enjoyed yeah. the show. Called Vibes, his whole family was there, you know. We just was, you know. Forever. And then he stops the show and says to 50,000 people <laughs> that he's ready to work with you. What goes through your mind when you hear something like that? Do you get ready? Do you feel like it's time yeah, to get prepared, back in your bag? Man. Like he was just letting everybody know we, you know, we've been working though. It just, 
just letting everybody know. What's the status? Are you signed right now? Are you with a label? Are you independent still? Yeah, I'm independent still. I've been meeting with people. Everybody want my masters. <laughs> you don't want to give it up. I want to give up my masters. I got some some of shit. Like, every label that you've met with, not not you. every label. You know, it's just about finding the right situation. Right. You know, you can you can meet a label and like like everybody who you come across in a label, and then the you know the paperwork might not be right or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I'm still independent though. Is it something that you're willing to do? Are you willing to sign, or are you just like yeah, if it's the right yeah. fit? Yeah, I've been. I mean, yeah, of course, like. I'm willing to sign. You know, I got a lot of stuff, a lot of labels on the table wanting to sign now. It's just about like finding the right, you know, situation. Word. Let's talk about you. I know that you, or at least I think, you've signed a couple of producers. You have some yeah, people my that's producers working with you. Yeah. Who you got? I got Ivy Beats right there, and I got De Niro Love. What can we expect from those guys? Man, they got some crazy shit on the way too. You know. Uh, just helping them, you know, get their foot in the door, getting no placements and shit. De Niro, he just, he he in Memphis and Ivy from Nashville. So, you know, I got two producers from where, you know, I feel like in Tennessee, places that mean, you know, something to me. Right. Uh, they help me grow and get where I was at. So, you know, I'm gonna eventually, you know, get more talent from the cities and shit like that in Tennessee. But yeah, they got some crazy shit on the way. What's your relationship with those guys like? Is it like a mentor relationship, big bro, little bro, or are you guys just all creating together? Yeah, both. You know, I just, I sign them to let them know they can have, like, the opportunity to do whatever the fuck they want. You know what I'm saying? If they want to fly to work with, you know what I'm saying, Gates, or they want to work, you know, work with any artists they, they you know, in contact with or want to work with, they got the opportunity to, you know, a lot of producers, they want to work with people and don't got the opportunity to. So right. it was more about like the support and the opportunity with them to do whatever they want to do. Letting know? them know that it's possible. You know? Yeah, they can, shit, if they, they got the support behind them. Word. All right, yeah. my last question for you. I feel like, uh, I was talking to one of my producers about this. I feel like for the past few years, right. we've seen larger than life producers that are popping for a year, mm -hmm. right? The mainstream hip hop will have a sound they will dominate that sound for a year, mm -hmm. that sound then expires, and then they're just kinda not popping anymore. Mm -hmm. How do you ensure that you're sitting in this seat again next year? How do you ensure that your sound or your skill set doesn't get stale? Yeah, uh, it's a couple of things that play an effect in it, you know what I'm saying? Like, the whole sound that I had, like, was the wave, was shit I had already moved on from like by the time I had made it to the industry, you know what I'm saying? So like the shit that I'm working on like now, it'll show that, you know, I moved on from what I was doing, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's about time or two. Another thing would be the relationships, you know what I'm saying? I don't know where other producers, how their relationships was with the people that they was working with, or if, even if they had relationships. Right. With me, I got like a lot of strong relationships. I network a lot, you know, and I know they play a big part in just, you know, just staying in the industry. It's gonna be ups and downs with anybody, you know what I'm saying? It'd be ups and downs with the highs and the lowest, mm -hmm. you know, it's just part of the game. But uh, for the most part, like, me and my long jeopardy, like, the industry, like, ain't no question. Like, because of the shit that I got going and my networking and the opportunities I got with people, like, I'm good, you know, I got a lot of relationships. All right, so, so you'll be good either yeah, way. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's, it's not, you know, like, really, honestly, like, I, I wouldn't question it, you know? I feel that. Mm -hmm. Take care, we got 28 years left of you making music. 28. That's it. The countdown begins, uh, and then you're gonna be teaching at some school. Possibly, if I get my degree, if I get in school, it's school to sell me. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be alright. I'm sure you'll get into <laughs> school. Take Keith, I appreciate you. The yeah. best producer alive for the year of 2018. My boy, yeah. thanks for stopping by, bro. Appreciate it.